For a long time, uh, there are a lot of questions about Peyronie's disease. What is it? Uh, patients are very concerned. Uh, they start to see a penile curvature and they're wondering what happened? Why did it happen? How did it happen? What initiated the onset? And uh, they're, they're concerned, is it a sexually transmitted disease? They're concerned, did something happen to initiate the process? Uh, and, and if so, what truly transpired? It's not only a patient, but it's also a patient and a partner issue as well. The uh, aspect of Peyronie's disease is something that uh, is long left a vacuum. Uh, it's been traditionally a part of the erectile dysfunction guidelines, which I uh, was a co-chair uh, of as well. I was currently the co-chair with Dr. Arthur Burnett, and uh, what we really wanted to do is establish a set of guidelines uh, that could allow clinicians, internists, psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, uh, practitioners to understand and appreciate the critical aspects of Peyronie's disease as it relates to disease onset, management, evaluation, and surgical options. We really wanted to do a, a, uh, a classic review, so we went back as far as 1962 to assess the published literature for Peyronie's disease. Only randomized controlled trials and some critical uh, uh, published uh, uh, reports were included. The panelists were not only colleagues in neurology, colleagues in psychiatry, colleagues in internal medicine who have a special interest in the field of Peyronie's disease and erectile dysfunction were included. And more importantly, we also had a non-medical uh, individual on the panel uh, who was able to not only be a, uh, as a patient, but could relate from a consumer perspective the overall aspects of Peyronie's disease. Historically, if we look at the data from the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s, men with penile curvature were thought to have the curvature due to sexually transmitted diseases. But that's really not the case. It's really an inflammatory state, secondary to a penile injury uh, that frequently occurs in the erect or the semi-erect state for these individual patients. And one of the th manifestations is they may develop a curvature. The curvature can be dorsal, can be dorsal lateral, can be lateral, can be ventral, or can be ventral lateral. Traditionally, urology has been the gatekeeper and uh, will be the gatekeeper for the management of Peyronie's disease. And uh, this is what really led us to not only initiate the guidelines from the American Urological Association, but more importantly, critically assess what is the published literature uh, and to put forth a set of guidelines. This allows everyone in the field of, of uh, medicine to understand and appreciate the unmet needs that are currently out there. Uh, there may be new therapies that start to evolve that may uh, render patients to have successful outcomes. Uh, there would be some critical uh, research aspects that would be ideal to, again, mobilize uh, researchers and clinicians to foster relationships and allow an enhanced research aspects for Peyronie's disease management.